Hello and welcome to episode 128 of the Giddy Knits podcast. As always, I am Helen and I am coming to you from Dundee in Scotland where I live with my husband Tom and my two boys, Arthur who is nine and Jasper who is six. Today is Tuesday the 21st of February. Um, I normally record on a Friday so it's thrown me a little bit but I've been a little bit out of routine over the last week or so um, so you're getting a Tuesday recording instead. <laughs> um, as always this is my crafty podcast. Um, I am the dyer behind Giddy Yarns and this is my little spot on the internet where I come to chat about whatever crafty projects I'm working on whether that is knitting, crochet, um, a bit of cross stitch, occasionally a bit of spinning whatever crafty projects I am working on. So yeah, hello and welcome. Um, welcome back to anyone that is a regular viewer. As always, you, I appreciate so much you coming and watching. Um, and hello to anyone that is new and checking out the podcast for the first time. I hope you enjoy it. What have I got for you this week? I'm going to start, as always, with a couple of little announcements. I've got some works in progress to share. I've got some finished objects to share, but those will be in the other order. Got that, got that wrong to start with. <laughs> I've got some finished objects to share. I've got some works in progress to talk about. I have got a fair few new cast-ons. I got a bit sidetracked over the last couple of weeks. Um, I have also got, I'm going to talk a little bit of cross-stitch. I've also got a fair amount of yarny goodness to share because I have had a few orders arrive over the last couple of weeks. And then as always, I will finish off the podcast with a little shop news section about what's coming to the shop in the next couple of weeks. Um, so yeah, that's that. Let's get started with the announcements. Um, nothing big. Um, a couple of things. Just first of all, a reminder that we have the Giddy Yarns make along ongoing, running constantly. Um, and I will be drawing the first, um, prize draw will be at the end of March. So basically any projects that you're working on that uses at least 50% Giddy Yarns. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to weigh your yarn. I'm not going to kind of ask you detail by detail whether you used exactly 50% but if you're using two skeins of yarn and one of them's mine and one of them's somebody else's and it's roughly half and half then that's fine. Um, <clears throat> and um, yeah basically any project you're working on that uses at least 50% of my yarn you can enter it in to be in with a chance of winning a prize at the end of each quarter. Um, you can enter in the Ravelry group, you can enter on Instagram and you can also enter in our Discord group. The details of all of those things are down underneath the video. Um, talking of the Discord group, um, thank you to everyone that has come over and joined the Discord group. I'm really enjoying it. Um, we have little spates of really chatty days, we have quieter days and it's just a really nice, I'm really, I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> It's nice to get to chat to some of you. I feel like I'm getting to know people in there, um, which is really nice. So if you haven't joined yet and you would like to, um, then there'll be a link down below that will take you to join the Discord group um, and you can come and chat with us about all the things that we chat about, not just crafting stuff. Um, we have got a little informal um, make-along starting over in the Discord group. It was suggested by one of the members. Um, so it's just an informal garment make-along. Um, any garment that you fancy making, um, then yeah, just come and join. There's no prizes or anything. Um, there's no rules, particularly strict rules or anything like that. I think we're starting a kind of cast on around the 20th of March. Something like that is the plan. Um, so yeah, if you fancy just a little informal knit along, then come over to the Discord group and join in. I think I'm going to be casting on a Whitmore sweater. I think I'm going to go for the jumper. I haven't quite decided because it's a cardigan version and a jumper version. I think I'm going to go for the cardigan. I want to do something. I'm going to, I'm going to push myself a little bit and I am going to make something using my new um, alpaca, Surrey alpaca silk fluff um, held with a fingering weight yarn. I haven't decided on colours yet um, but I can work that out, that's not a problem. So yeah, I think I'm going to go for a Whitmore sweater. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Um, so that's that, that's that. What else? Um, Unravel. I'm going to be at Unravel Festival this weekend I'm down in Farnham in Surrey. Is it in Surrey? Yeah, it's in Surrey. Um, I'm helping out the little grey girl on her stool, so I'm not vending. 
um, I am just going to be there as a helper. Um, so I'll be there for all three days. So if you happen to come along to the show, then please pop over to Jem's stall and squish all her gorgeous yarn and then say hello to me because <laughs> that would be really nice. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be away for a week. I'm going down to Kent to where Jem lives. Originally, I'm, I'm her driver for the weekend, basically. Um, she's hired a van. I'm getting the train down and then I'm driving to and from the show and helping her out at the show over the weekend um, and things like that. So it's going to be fun. It'll be a nice week away, kind of a working holiday, but without the stress of it being my work. Right, finished objects. Let's get into some finished objects before I ramble on for far too long. I finished a couple of small things this over the last couple of weeks. Um, the first one, these do not fit on the blockers at all. I finished another of my colour of the month socks for Tom. Um, so if you followed the podcast last year, you'll know that each month during um, last year, I released a colour of the month collection that is continuing this year, um, but we're doing it more as a club. So it's based on a pre-order basis, um, but the colourways are revealed in, in advance. Um, but last year I took a 50 gram skein of each of those and I knit a sock for Tom. Um, just a single sock because he wears odd socks anyway and this is my um, November colourway. Um, so I have finally finished his November socks. I had, um, I managed to get, how many, I managed to get eight of the twelve finished by Christmas. Um, so he's got four more to come. So this is one of them. I've got basically September, October, November and December um, to be finished. Um, so this was the November colourway and that is finished. As I said, it doesn't fit on the blocker at all. Um, but there we go. It's just a vanilla sock. I do, I think, 10 rows of rib. I'm doing a German short row heel and then I'm using the umbrella toe um, pattern from the umbrella socks, um, which is a pattern by Kay Jones because I just happened to have that sorted for 72 stitches already on my phone when I came to knit the first toe. So I've stuck with it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that is one finished object. I've still got another three of those to get done, but they're quite ni nice mindless knitting, so that's good. And then I also finished my tender hat. Um, so this is a pattern by Melody Hoffman. Um, it's such a lovely simple pattern. It's written for um, DK and um, lace weight fluff held together. I used um, two strands of fingering weight in my sole on sole Soul meet, soul meet soul on lover's lips, my brain went then, um, colourway, and I held it with the fluff, um, the plum coloured fluff, um, so it's the alpaca, it's, it's Suri Silk, Suri, oh my goodness, I always get this wrong, baby Suri alpaca and silk um, in a lace weight, and it is absolutely lovely. I wish you could feel this through the screen, I really do, I just kind of want to, I want to hold it up and say go and squish your TV screens and see how this feels, because it is so gorgeous. It also, didn't make my nose itchy while I was knitting it, which is a big bonus because mohair does exactly that. Um, I'm going to try it on, but I can't find the back. That's the back. Um, so I do have my hair in a ponytail today, but um, I was a little bit worried it was going to come out too small um, because I was using... I used the needles that were recommended in the pattern and I was using fingering weight held double so I didn't check gauge or anything like that and there was one point I was worried about the size but I did it I knit the exact the pattern exactly as it was apart from changing the yarn and it fits fine I mean this is me with a ponytail as well so it's got my ponytail contained in it and it is so lovely and fluffy and cozy and yeah it was a really nice knit I really enjoyed it um, it was really quick, it was really satisfying because it was quick. Um, so yeah, I would really, really recommend it actually. And it worked really nicely with the fingering weight held double um, and the mohair held with it as well. Um, I love the effect of fingering weight held double. It's always kind of one of my favourite things. Um, I really like the way that the yarn looks when it's knit up that way. Um, so I couldn't resist. But yeah, there we go. I have finished another, a finish a hat, finished a hat. Um, yeah, and now I want to knit all the things with the alpaca fluff, to be honest, because it's just so lovely. Um, and in fact, that's what I was saying about the garment. So I've mentioned this before on the podcast that I struggle with mohair. 
it makes my nose itch when I knit with it. Often, if I am knitting with it, I have to I take an antihistamine <laughs> because it'll, I know it will make my nose itch. Um, I've got a hat that I made. I made an everyday slouchy beanie, which is a pattern by Dragon Horde Yarns. Um, using mohair and fingering weight held together and um, I do wear the hat a lot and actually I'm fine with it on my head but during the process of knitting it I just I couldn't I couldn't get on with it and I've always kind of felt like I couldn't wear a garment with fluff held double because of that um, like I feel like I would react to it I feel like it would make me itchy and sneezy when I was wearing it and the thought of knitting that much um, with it making my nose itch um, seemed impossible um, but this, the fluff, the Surrey fluff, um, I think I could definitely get away with a garment in this. And this is so snuggly that I'm gonna give it a go. Hence the Whitmore. I am going to try it. Um, so that is my finished objects. Let's move on to a couple of works in progress. I, as I said, I got a bit sidetracked over the last couple of weeks so I've not made masses of progress on any of my existing works in progress. I've done a tiny bit on my twist and turns um, shawl, yeah my twists and, twists and turns shawl uh, but not enough that it's really worth showing you. I've done a tiny bit on my um, May mask cardigan but again not even an inch so not, not enough that is worth showing you. Um, so yeah, not a lot of progress has been made on existing whips, um, but I have done, I have made a bit, a little bit of progress on my Soundwaves cowl. Um, not a lot because this is now, as I've said before, this is now my D and D knitting. Um, so whenever we're playing D and D and I'm not DMing, um, this is what I'm working on. So I've made a little bit of progress. You can see I finished this color and I've started the next color. Um, I will move my little progress keeper so that you can kind of see um, but my brother and his girlfriend have been away skiing this week so I didn't get masses of progress because we haven't had we've had a we've missed a couple of games with them um, so I think I've, I think I've only actually had like one one session of knitting on this um, but there we go I'm really enjoying it I'm loving that it's um, got a specific time to work on it so it feels like there's no pressure because I know that I'll work on this when I'm playing D&D &D. Um, and yeah I think I'm on colour 9 now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 7, 8, yeah I'm on colour 9 um, so slowly getting there. Um, the pattern, as I said, is the Soundwaves Cowl, which is a pattern by Elliot Craft House Magic. The yarn is also from Elliot Craft House Magic. This is the um, her advent calendar from 2022. Um, and yeah, I'm also using a Craft House Magic bag as well. <laughs> Christmas cookies. This was a present from the boys one Christmas. Um, so that is that one. Not masses of progress, but a little bit. Um, and then the other thing that I have picked up this week um, is my Halloween socks, um, living in my little little grey girl bag, as always. Um, with have I said these? The, have I mentioned the tag, the gift tag, um, the bag tags with my socks bag tags on? I don't think I've got a bag tag on that one. No, um, I'll have to look and see what bag tags she's got this weekend. I wonder if she does cowl ones. Maybe I need a cowl bag tag. Like bag tag. Anyway, I'm rambling. Um, Halloween socks. So I have made some progress on my Halloween socks. Um, I now have heels in both of them. So these are the Little Bit of Hocus Pocus or a Little Hocus Pocus socks by a simple handmade, no, by a, hand, a handmade life, I think. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, and it's a pattern that features just a simple cable, um, cable pattern down the side. Um, this yarn is, quite variegated so it it doesn't show up as well as it could I've also think I messed up a bit and made that one a bit too short or that one a bit too long I don't really know doesn't really matter there we go um so that is the pattern um the yarn I am using is um yarn from Suzanne a green lambkin yarns it's her jelloween colorway um which I really like it's such pretty um I I the mini um I'm not explaining this one very well, am I? Sorry. Um, the mini is just a mini from my stash, um, at, but it worked so perfectly with the colours in the sock that it was ideal. 
um, and I'm knitting these um, two, I'm knitting them concurrently. Um, so basically I always pick up whichever one's had the least work on it when I pick these up to knit them. Um, but yeah, we have both have got heels in and I've worked kind of an inch or so down the leg of each one. I think I've done a full pattern repeat on each leg. Um, so we're getting there slowly. Um, I really want to get these finished and I'm, I'm not casting on any new patterned socks until these ones are finished. That is kind of my, my, my goal, my little rule for myself. Um, so hopefully, hopefully I will stick to that. <laughs> um, but yeah, they need a bit more work on them to get them finished. I was hoping to get them done by the end of February, um, but I think my February goals are going to struggle a little bit seeing as I'm now away for a week and not likely to have that much knitting time while I'm away. Um, but yeah, that's all I've worked on in terms of works in progress. But as I said, I did get a bit sidetracked. And I do have three new cast-ons to share. So the first one, I actually have a half-finished object. <laughs> um, I cast on, when I finished the sock for Tom, I cast on a pair of vanilla socks for me. Um, because I couldn't resist and I dug out of my basket, I don't know if you'll remember, um, at the beginning of the year I caked up some yarn and I put it in a basket ready for sock cast-ons um, for kind of the aim being they're ready for sock cast-ons for the first half of the year and then I'll add more for later in the year but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Um, these sock blockers are not the best but there we go, it'll do. Um, they do fit my foot, they just don't fit, I think maybe that's a small, I think when I ordered these sock blockers, I have a feeling they sent me, one, the slightly wrong size, I feel like I've got a small one mixed in with the medium ones, because there is just one that never quite seems to fit the socks on properly, yeah, there we go, because that one is exactly the same, and the sock fits on it, anyway, rambling, 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 so, I have a half finished object. <laughs> Um, I cast on a pair of socks in the um, in a style craft yarn. Have I got the yarn band in there? I think it's a style craft. Yes, I do. Yes, it is the Kiliman Kilimanjaro colorway. Um, so it is style craft head over heels, um, which is a commercial sock yarn, head over heels, and the colorway is shade number. Um, as always, excuse the dye underneath my fingernails. Um, shade number 3099, um, which is Kilimanjaro. I've had this in my stash for absolutely ages. Um, but there it is. I'm really pleased with how these knit up. I've literally just done, I did 15 rows of rib. I knit straight down the leg. I put a German short row heel in. I didn't change yarn or anything. I just put a German short row heel in when I got to the point of needing to. Um, and then I carried on down the foot and I just did a normal kind of wedged toe. Um, which is my kind of go-to sock recipe that I have memorised. Um, so that's that one. I haven't cast on the second sock yet, which I really should do, because otherwise second sock syndrome will strike and I will never get a second sock in this one. Um, but how pretty does the yarn look in the cake? <laughs> um, so there we go. That is a new cast on and also a half-finished object. They've been really nice... Um, they're just really good reading knitting, aren't they? Vanilla socks. That's that's what I find. Um, I can sit with my Kindle and I can knit away on these and um, I don't have to think too much, which is partly why the second one hasn't been started because I need to actually stop and think and cast on the rib. I can't knit rib and read at the same time. Um, so hopefully I will get that done. Excuse me. I've got these tins. Right. I'm thinking about something like this for the shop. So... I got this tin with stitch markers. I bought some stitch markers from um, Generates. Um, I picked them up at Glasgow School of Yarn. Um, they, I think I've got one of them in here. I actually got Progress Keepers. They're these, they're little wooden, wood and resin um, Progress Keepers. Get them on camera, focus on that one, please. There we go, wood and resin Progress Keepers. They came with all different colors of, um, the resin they're really pretty anyway but um i put the stitch markers into my stitch marker storage and stuff like that and i was thinking about i needed some i needed like a little notions thing to go in this project bag and um all i had was this tin 
So I popped in some little bulb stitch markers. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to show you this without everything falling out. I popped in some little bulb stitch markers, um, just the little bulb pin ones. I popped in a progress keeper. I popped in a darning needle. And then I also have some of these folding scissors that I popped in, but it would work just as well with um, some of the little higher, higher snips because, not that my camera's gonna focus on them, too much glare, but you know what I mean. Some of the little higher, higher snips because they would fit in there really, really nicely. Um, and I think like that's just what you need for a pair of socks, isn't it? Some bulb stitch markers if you mark your rows like I do, darning needle to finish things off, some scissors to cut your yarn, progress keeper if you wanna mark your progress. Um, and they fit nicely in a little tin which fits really nicely in the project bag. So I am wondering about maybe getting some of this, some tins this size and maybe putting together some little notions tins um, for the shop. <clears throat> but quite when I'll do that, I've got no idea, but let me know what you think. <laughs> um, so that's the first new cast on. <clears throat> the second new cast on is completely um, Fran's fault. Fran, who has the Franny Do Makes um, podcast here on YouTube, it is completely her fault because she shared in the Discord, in our Discord group, she shared her finished object and I fell in love with it. Um, so I have cast on a Miles Magic Shawl, which is a pattern by Stephen West. Um, and basically, it's the most amazing stash buster. Um, so it's the whole pattern is knit with fingering weight, two strands of fingering weight yarn held together at all times. Um, so it's really hard to show you what this is going to look like. You'll have to watch it as it grows if you've not seen the pattern. Um, so you start with this kind of mesh section, um, which he recommends doing as kind of a striped marl. So I held one colour all the way through. And then I also, I then held these four colours with it and striped them throughout. Um, and then you pick up stitches. So you leave your stitches on a spare needle at the top here, because you'll need those later. Um, and then you pick up along this edge and you do some seed stitch sections or moss stitch. Um, so like the, the one by one rib that you, um, it's basically one by one rib, but you stagger them. So one row it's knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, the next row it's purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, if that makes sense. I'm sure you all know what moss stitch or seed stitch is. Um, but then with this one, he recommends doing a faded marl. So basically, I think I've done four rows, I can't remember, four rows with each colour, and then you drop out one colour throughout. So I'm doing this, these colours together and then, I can't quite remember what order they're in. I've got it written down somewhere. Um, is there going to be able to stack it? So I'm using those, all of those colours. Um, but they're kind of faded and marled together throughout the whole thing. Um, and then I'm going to just repeat that se sequence. So it will be kind of almost stripey, or the, but this will just repeat through the whole section. But basically what I did is I went through my scraps and I pulled out all of my kind of blues and purples. Um, let's see if I can show you this basket. I pulled out all of my kind of pinks and purples and not my pinks, sorry, my blues and purples um, scraps that I thought could work all together in one project. And um, there's some little bits and pieces in here for little pops of brighter bits. Um, I have got a little bit of mohair in here. I'm not sure whether I'm going to use it. Um, I've also got a little bit of the fluff from the January Club. I'm wondering if maybe I could pop that in there somewhere. I'm not sure yet. Um, but he does say there's options of kind of places where you could pop stuff. Um, you could use a bit of fluff. So I'm going to kind of see later in the pattern and see what he recommends. But I'm really enjoying it. It's actually knitting up a lot faster than I was expecting because, well, I guess it's basically a DK weight shawl, isn't it? Because you're using fingering weight held together throughout the whole of it. Um, I was worried that I wasn't going to enjoy the moss, sec moss stitch section because I really am not overly keen on one by one rib. 
or that kind of knit one pearl one rhythm um, but actually with the fading and the marl and all of that kind of stuff it's really enjoyable um, so yeah this has started and I'm really enjoying it and um, yeah it's just a fun stash buster project um, not that I should be casting on any new shawls because I have far too many already on the needles but I enjoyed just having a little bit of a cast on this week really it's been nice it's been refreshing right talking of things that I really have absolutely no reason to start and really shouldn't start I also started a new blanket <laughs> So yeah, this is blanket number, I'm looking at my list, this is blanket number eight, on the go. Um, but I wanted to do this with my fantasy mini, so the minis from the fantasy club. Um, so if you don't want to see the fantasy club because um, you're getting the quarterly option and you're trying to avoid spoilers, which is tricky, um, <laughs> then um, skip to the timestamp that I put on the screen now. But here are the squares that I've done so far. So what I am doing is I am using the minis to hold, um, I'm holding them double to just create a little granny square. So I think I've got four round repeat with fingering weight held double. Um, so that's one of the colours. I've got them all a bit muddled up now. That's another of the colours. That's another of the colours and that green one yeah that's another of the colors and then we've also got that one which I've not made any squares from yet um so yeah I'm doing um fingering weight held double I've got sparkle minis um and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just do like a join as you go method using undyed yarn in fingering weight held double but just a plain not a sparkle um so the squares will be sparkly the border won't be um and then I'm just going to kind of join them as you go. I'm doing two squares out of each colour, um, which is what I can get out of um, 20 grams of fingering weight, which makes sense because I've done it with 20 grams before and I've made um, managed to get kind of four squares out of 20 grams held together around this size. Um, so two makes sense. But yeah, I'm going to do this with all of the fantasy minis and create a fantasy blanket. Um, that is my plan. Um, not that I don't already have the Lord of the Rings blanket from last year's club that I should be getting on with, but I don't know. It's going to be so squishy and lovely though, and it's just pretty, and I needed a new cast on. So, yeah, that's it. I've cast on another blanket. Number eight. <laughs> no judgment, please. <laughs> okay, so what else did I want to talk to you about? Cross stitch. I have finished this month's um, <clears throat> cross stitch. So I joined, if you are new and you don't know what I'm talking about, I um, signed up for the um, Caterpillar cross stitch um, British Isles mystery stitch along thingy. I'm not 100% I can't remember exactly what they called it now. I wonder if it's written on here anywhere. British Isles Adventure part this is the yes part one that's because that's this is the part one of the pattern so basically over the next six months the first six months of the year each month um towards the end of the month you get a new part of the pattern um to create a cross stitch which will represent the british isles um and i have finished the january part of the pattern um so here it is i'm hoping that's focusing because i can't actually see there we go so we've got um edinburgh castle the angel of the north a lobster off in the sea, fish and chips. Um, oh, I've forgotten the name of the tower again. I know people knew what this was, but I've forgotten the name of the tower. I think it's in York. Um, you've got a uh, Blackpool Tower, a kilt, um, and then this is an island. So this, I think, is kind of going to be representing the um, representing the shape of the United Kingdom. Um, so yeah, the next part of the pattern comes out at the end of February. Um, but I'm quite pleased to have kind of kept up with it for January at least and I kept up with it easily in January so I'm hoping that I should be able to keep up with the whole thing and have it finished by part way through the year and then it can go up on my wall in my office. 
I did buy the kit. I could obviously have just bought the pattern and gone with my own colours, but I thought, why not? I'm just going to get the kit. Um, but the kit did come really nicely with all the colours already wound on and um, numbered and everything. So that's actually been really handy. <laughs> so if you can stretch to the kit, then I would recommend it because actually the way the kit came was really, really useful. And I've just realised I've got a thread that's not in the right place. Obviously didn't tidy up properly. There we go. Um, so yeah, that is my cross stitch that I'm currently doing. Um, it's been nice to get back to a bit of cross stitch again, something a bit different. It takes me away from knitting occasionally. Um, right, so the other thing I've got to share is a lot of yarny goodness. So I have a basket here full of yarny goodness. <laughs> um, but I've not had, I mean, to be fair, it is now late February and I've had very little yarny goodness coming in this year. So I don't feel too bad about it. Um, the first thing, which was a big purchase for me, um, is that I ordered four skeins of yarn from um, Hannah at the Camel's Yarn. She did a pre-order based off her Cornwall themed advent calendar. Um, and, oh, I just... If you know, if you've been around for a while, you'll know that I grew up in Cornwall um, and the colourways were all so perfect and I just couldn't resist picking up a few of them. I could have ordered so many more than I did. Um, I ordered four and I felt like I was quite restrained with that order. Um, but here they are. So I picked up this, oh, how gorgeous is this? Um, this gorgeous green skein. Also, how amazing are her labels? Look, they've got like fabric bits and then they're just beautiful. Um, so this one is um, Tahiti Woods, um, which is a woodlands um, just on the outskirts of Redruth. Um, and I, we used to go there, sort of pool more than Redruth, I guess, if you know Cornwall. But anyway, um, <laughs> we go there quite regularly. Whenever we go to Cornwall, we always go to Tahiti Woods with the kids. My parents take us. They has really, really tame squirrels. Quite often you can feed nuts to the squirrels and the birds are really, really tame. Um, and it's really fun. The boys absolutely love it. Um, so I couldn't resist picking up a skein of Tahiti Woods. Um, I also picked up a skein and this one I got on DK. Um, but this one is um, Mausel Harbour at sunset. Um, so Mausel, or if you are not from Cornwall or don't know how to pronounce it, it is Mouse Hole. Um, but Mausel is um, a little tiny, um, well it's not really a fishing, it used to be a fishing village. Um, but it's a little tiny seaside harbour kind of village. Um, and it does the most amazing Christmas lights. If you're ever down in Cornwall for Christmas, you need to go and see the Mausel lights. Um, and there's a famous story actually. Um, about the Mausel cat um, and it has the lights and everything um, but I couldn't resist picking up a skein of this. My dad used to work for the National Trust and he used to drive an information van around Cornwall and he used to park up each day at a different location in Cornwall and people could join the National Trust from the van or he'd have information leaflets and stuff like that and he spent a lot of time parked up at Mausel um, he was an honorary local over there um, when he was working and when I was a kid I used to spend so many summers um, during the school holidays <laughs> I used to have to go to work with him and I just used to spend so much time hanging around in Mausel I couldn't resist picking up that one. Um, then I also picked up um, St Michael's Mount in summer. Um, St Michael's Mount is um, in Marazion and it is a kind of castle on a on a little mount out in the water and you can get across to it depending on high tide or low tide at low tide you can walk across the causeway at high tide you have to get a boat um, but I spent three summers as a teenager working at various places on St Michael's Mount I spent um, two summers in the cafe I think and one summer working in the gift shop over there as well so I couldn't resist a bit of St Michael's Mount. Um, and then finally I picked up a skein of the coming home trees um, because this one made me laugh when she shared it and the photo inspiration of it because there is as you kind of head towards Cornwall so you're driving to Cornwall um, from or from anywhere really because there's only really one way to get into Cornwall um, as you're driving towards Cornwall um, and you kind of get, I can't quite remember exactly where it is on the way, but um, 
there is a point where there is this hill and on top of this hill at the edge of the road are just kind of this circle of trees um, and um, yeah we've always called them exactly that the coming home trees and it was so funny to hear somebody else um, from Cornwall calling them exactly the same thing um, so I couldn't resist picking up yeah we know when we drive past the coming home trees we know we are on our way and heading home um, so yeah I couldn't resist I just couldn't resist picking up the Cornwall some of the Cornwall her Cornwall colorways I could have got so many more of them and had so many more stories to tell you about Cornwall <laughs> um, but yeah I'm I have no idea what I'm going to do with them what they're going to become at the moment they're just going to be works of art um, for me to look at and make me feel at home <laughs> Right, then the other three things are yarn clubs. So I signed up for the Spectrum Fibres yarn club for this year because um, I love, I love um, Spectrum Fibres yarn. She does such gorgeous kind of colours. It's really, she's got a really unique um, colour palette. Like you see her yarn and you know it's her yarn. Um, so I picked, a, I, I ordered her yarn club and I think I'm going to stick with that as my main yarn club for the year. Um, so this is the first colourway from, so the January colourway. Um, it is called Dreaming of Spring. Isn't it gorgeous? Again, I've got no idea what I'm going to do with these yet. Part of me just thinks maybe socks. Um, I get the most wear out of my hand knit socks. But I also need some, I do need some mittens. So this could become mittens. Or I don't know, but it's so pretty, so pretty. Um, and I think, yeah, as I said, that's going to be kind of my my main yarn club for the year. Um, but I also ordered um, Ellie at Craft House Magic is doing a music from the movies yarn club, and she's doing seventy gram sock sets. So I picked up her January and February ones, which both arrived this week. Um, so January was a view to a kill. So basically it's all the song the colorways are all named after um songs from action movies so this one is a view to a kill um which was inspired by um the song from the james bond james bond movies and she puts in a little info sheet which is quite nice so a view to the kill was the 14th in the james bond movie series and included the seventh and final appearance of roger moore James Bond is pitted against Max Zorin, played by Christopher Walken. The song, A View to a Kill, was written by Duran Duran and John Barry. <laughs> it was rumoured that bassist John Taylor approached the producer at a party and drunkenly asked if he could write a theme tune. <laughs> there we go. Um, so that is the View to a Kill colourway. That's so pretty. Um, and then the February one was um, Jewel of the Nile. How pretty is that one? I love this colour, really, really pretty. Um, and it says the Jewel of the Nile was the movie sequence to romance, movie sequel to Romancing the Stone. Um, the soundtrack included a song of the same name. The lyrics fit well with the story, and the song has a feel-good vibe associated with the eighties. There we go. So that is those ones. I haven't yet decided. The temptation is to just order the whole year because they're really pretty, but I haven't I haven't quite decided yet whether I can justify ordering two clubs all year or whether I which I I don't know. I really want all of Ellie's yarn because it's so pretty, but I also want the Spectrum Fibers yarn and I don't know. So I'm gonna see whether I give in to temptation before the pre-orders close. <laughs> and then the final bit of yarny goodness is um some minis from Erin. Um, Erin at Henny Penny Makes and I have decided to swap minis this year from our yarn clubs. So she's getting a set of 20 gram minis from me each month and I'm getting a set from her. Um, so this was her January mini lovers club. Now I've got an extra mini in here. So these four were the January colours um, because with her club you get four mini skeins. Um, but I, because I'm because there's five in mine and she wanted it to be equal, she's added in an extra skein. And I said, basically, I'm gonna make a blanket, I think. Um, and so whatever extra one she wants to add in, whatever she's kind of got spare that goes with them is absolutely fine. So she's added in a second skein of this one for me. Um, so I've got two of the variegated, but 
they're really really pretty I did say I was going to do a blanket but now I'm kind of thinking maybe I will just do scrappy socks with them I'm not sure I'm not sure at all um but yeah that is it that is my yarny goodness a fair amount come in but it's fine <laughs> Um, I can now put them away in my stash and they won't sit on the side staring at me, um, tempting me to cast on new things. The final thing I wanted to talk about is a little bit of shop news um, because I've got a couple of things happening in the next couple of weeks. So February the 24th, um, pre-orders open for the Hobbit collection. The pre-orders will be open for a week, um, assuming they're not ridiculously popular, which I doubt. Um, so they should be, it should be fine. The pre-order should be open for a week. Um, and um, I have got seven colorways going into that collection. Now, I have recorded a separate Hobbit collection video, which will be going up on Friday. Um, so if you want to watch that and see everything in a bit more detail, you can do there. Um, but I thought I'd show you the colourways quickly now, um, but I don't have swatches and stuff to show you right now, so if you want to see them um, with the swatches and things, then catch the Hobbit video later in the week. Um, but we have got Bilbo Baggins, which is that one there. It's a gentle variegated, so it's quite a pastel variegated. Then we have got uh, The Wandering Wizard, inspired by Gandalf which is that one there which is a really nice kind of tonal speckled grey then we have what's it got in its pocketses inspired by Gollum which is kind of a, it's got that grello feel it's got greys and yellows in there but also some um, greens as well then we've got um, Bjorn the skin changer um, which is this one here. So it's kind of browns and teals. It's an unusual colourway, but I really love it. Then we've got um, Don't Leave the Path, which is ex inspired by Mirkwood and their journey into Mirkwood, which is kind of really nice greens with some little navy bits as well in there. Then we've got um, the Long Lake, which is this one here, inspired by the lake at Lake Town, where they kind of end up when they've ridden the barrels out of Mirkwood. Um, so that is the Long Lake. And then finally, we have the Lonely Mountain. Love this. This one is my favourite colourway in the collection. Greys and kind of pinky purple speckles. Really love this one. So yeah. That is the Hobbit collection. They will be, as I said, pre-orders will be going live on Friday. Um, I have, I am going to be making them available as mini packs as well. I wasn't 100% sure whether I was going to do that because obviously they started out as the Middle Earth minis. Um, so a lot of you will already have had these as mini skeins. But for anyone that's new to me and not come across them before, I thought I would do, um, I would do some mini packs as well. Brain slowed down there definitely <laughs> um so that's that one and then the other thing i wanted to share with you very quickly is um clubs will be going live on the 1st of march um so i probably won't podcast before then the next podcast will be after the 1st of march but as always clubs will be open to pre-order from the 1st to the 8th of the month um and um we've got the fantasy book club um, so for March our theme is witches and wizards and this is the mood board up here um, and again as always you can you can order it as um, sock sets 100 gram skeins I also do minis it's a whole vast array of options that I've talked about them before um, but that is the mood board for March and then we also have the March colour of the month which is this colourway right here um, I'm really pleased with how this came out. I will pop in a minute. I'll show you the colourway now here. Um, and I will pop up on the screen here the inspiration image. Um, so you can see the yarn alongside the inspiration image. But that is March's colour of the month as well. So yeah, they'll both be available for pre-order um, from the 1st to the 8th of March. Um, and that's it really, I think. I think that's everything. So thank you very, very much for watching and I will see you all again very soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.